the bell icon to turn on notifications. Hello everyone and welcome to this video tutorial on creating a dynamic chart label using slices and the new text join function in Excel 2019. Now a dynamic chart title is basically a title which updates depending on what you have selected. And in this example, I'm going to be making my selections from a slicer. So I have a spreadsheet here in front of me and I have a pivot table that's showing some product categories and the total sales for those categories. And from that pivot table, I've created a very simple pivot chart. And this pivot chart has a title, but currently that title just says total. What I also have on this spreadsheet is a slicer for the store. So essentially I can use this slicer to filter the information in the pivot chart if I just want to see the information related to Computech, I can click that on the slicer and the pivot chart will update. Microworld, the pivot chart will update. And if I clear the slicers and select both of them, then I'm going to see the data for both of them. So this slicer is linked to this pivot chart. Now, what I'm trying to achieve in this video is I want to add a title to my pivot chart that says sales by store but then I want it to say which store I'm currently viewing. So if I have Computex selected in the slicer, I want the title to say sales by store Computech. If I have Microworld selected, I want it to say Microworld. And if I have both stores selected, I want to see both stores listed there. Now this isn't a particularly difficult thing to do, but there are a few steps to it. And I will say at the beginning here, this is by no means the only method you can use to do this. There are lots of other methods available out there. This is just the way that I tend to do it when I'm trying to do a dynamic chart title. Now for me, the key to all of this is in the preparation. Before we actually start to go in and start creating our formulas to create our dynamic title, I need to do some prep work first. And I always like to keep my preparation work away from my main spreadsheet that I'm working on. So what I've added down here is a new worksheet called Helper. And what I have on here is just a few little titles. I have one that says Slicer, one that says Pivot Table, one for title and one for subtitle. And this is where I'm going to do all my workings out, all of my calculations before I bring it all together on the main spreadsheet that I'm going to use. So the first step in this process is I'm going to take this slicer and I'm going to copy it. Control C. I'm going to go to my helper worksheet and I'm going to paste that slicer in and just put it underneath that slicer heading. And I'm putting this here because in a moment, once I've done my calculations, I want to test that everything works. And so I'm going to need my slicer for that. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create another little pivot table on the helper worksheet. And this is going to help me construct my formula that I'm going to use to create my chart title. So I'm going to go back to my original source data just here. I'm going to go up to table design and say summarize with pivot table. I'm going to use my data range text sales, but this time I'm going to place the pivot table on an existing worksheet and I'm going to put it on the helper worksheet. And I'm just going to place it in cell H4 and click OK. And now I have a new blank pivot table on my helper worksheet. Now I only need to have one field in my pivot table, and that's going to be the same field that I'm using in my slicer and that is the store field. So I'm going to grab the store pivot table field and I'm going to drag and drop it down into the columns area. So now I have Computech and Microworld showing in one row, which is exactly what I want for this. Now, one thing I don't need here is these grand totals. So I'm going to jump up to the design ribbon and I'm just going to turn off grand totals. So now that I just have Computech and Microworld listed in a row, this is what I'm going to utilize to help me build my title for my pivot chart. So this is what I would refer to as the preparation stage. Because now I've done that, I am ready to start constructing my chart title. Now, my main chart title, I'm just going to type in down here. It's going to say sales by store. And then I want it to list whether it's Computech, Microworld, or both of them. 
and to construct this formula I'm going to use the new text join function. Now text join is available to Excel 2019 users, it is one of the newer functions available in Excel. If you have a version older than 2019 then you'll need to use a combination of three other functions, concatenate, substitute and trim. And I'm going to show you how that works in a moment. But first let's concentrate on text join. So I'm going to type in the function, open my bracket, and the first argument is delimiter. So what this is basically saying is if both Computech and Microworld are selected, how do I want these words separated? Do I want them separated with a space or with a comma or with something else? Now in my case I want them separated with a comma space. And I need to put this in quote marks, like so. Comma to move on to the next argument. My next argument is a true or false argument, and I'm going to select true here to ignore empty cells. Now the reason why I'm selecting that option is because in the next argument I need to select the text that I want to use in my subtitle. And my text is contained in row 5. So what I'm basically saying here with that true argument is that I want Excel to ignore any empty cells in row 5. And close my bracket and hit enter. And there we go, Computech and Microworld are listed there with a comma space separating them. Now at this stage you might think that you want to test this out, so if I click on Computech on the slicer, you would hope that your subtitle is going to change just to say Computech. Now mine hasn't and that's because I've missed out one very important step. I need to make sure that my slicer is connected to the new pivot table that I've created. So I'm going to click on my slicer, up to my slicer ribbon and click on report connections. Now in here you can see that this slicer is already connected to the sales by category pivot table which is the one on the other worksheet but it's not connected to pivot table 3 which is this one just here. So I'm going to put a tick in the box, click on OK and now if I click Computech you can see that not only does that pivot table change but the subtitle also changes. So I can see that that formula is working correctly. Now just as a side note for those people who are not using Excel 2019 and don't have access to that text join command, you can use the concat or concatenate if you have an even older version function in order to do this. So I'll do this very quickly. We need to concatenate our two store names, so Computech is the first one. I'm going to separate these with a space and then Microworld. like so. So now that's producing Computech and Microworld, but what I want is a comma in the middle. So I'm going to edit my formula and I'm going to add the substitute function before the concat function. And I'm going to say replace the old text, which is the space, with comma space. And hit enter. So we're getting closer to what we want. We now have Computech, comma, Microworld, but I also have a comma at the end because there is a space there. So the final thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use or add in the trim function, which trims any erroneous spaces off of words. And hit enter. And there we go. And that should also work in exactly the same way. So that's the workaround if you don't have Excel 2019. So now we're at this stage, we've got all the information that we need, all we need to do now is link our titles to our pivot chart. So I'm going to jump back to sales by category, I'm going to click the text box for my chart title, I'm going to go up to the formula bar, type in equals, jump back to my helper worksheet and select the cell that contains the first title and hit enter. So now I have my first chart title. What I'm now going to do is insert a text box somewhere onto my chart. I'm just going to put it underneath just here. And I'm going to do exactly the same thing. Make sure I have the text box selected. Go to the formula bar and type equals. 
jump back to the helper tab and click in cell B14, which contains my formula and hit enter. And there we go, it's pulled through both Computech and Microworld. Now, what I might want to do here is just a quick bit of formatting to make this look a little bit nicer. So I'm gonna drag this text box out and I'm gonna center the text. I might want to move it up and I might want to change the color, maybe make it bold and slightly bigger, like so. You can do whatever you want with regards to formatting. But now what I should find is that if I utilize the filter on this page, if I select Computech, it changes to Computech. Microworld, I get Microworld. And if I have both selected, I can see both listed there. So with a little bit of preparation and a couple of functions, we've managed to create a really nice interactive dynamic chart title. And of course, if you don't want anyone to be able to see your helper worksheet, you can, of course, right click, select hide to hide that away. And no one is any the wiser. So that's it. That's one example of how you can utilize the text join function and slices to create dynamic pivot chart labels. I hope you find that helpful and I will see you in the next video. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To get four free courses in Excel, QuickBooks, Microsoft Project, and Photoshop, click over there. And click over there to see more videos from Simon Says It.